Now that we've introduced the idea of a Hamiltonian cycle, let's look at it rigorously. What is a Hamiltonian cycle? It is a closed walk. That means my beginning will be my end that visits each vertex exactly once. So that means I'm going to come back to where I started, having visited each vertex exactly once. Here is a Hamiltonian cycle on this graph. Of course, that's not the only way I could have done it. I could have started here and I could have gone around through this star. That's an equally good Hamiltonian path or Hamiltonian cycle. Now we can look over here at this graph. This is called the Peterson graph. And we can try the same thing. Starting here, we can go around and we can get to all of these. And now we can kind of go inside and traverse along and then go, uh-oh, there's nowhere I can get back to where I started. I've already touched every vertex, but I don't have a Hamiltonian cycle because I can't get back to where I was without revisiting a vertex. So again, it's not about revisiting edges. Of course, you won't be able to do that either because we have the stronger condition of you can't revisit vertices. So what we want to ask is in the Eulerian walk case, we had a nice characterization of when Eulerian walks exist in a graph. Hamiltonian cycles, as we've discussed, is a much harder problem, at least assuming that P does not equal NP, it's much harder. Um, but we can still say a few things. Why does this graph over here, which is K5, have a Hamiltonian cycle, but this graph, which is called the Peterson graph, doesn't? And the idea is how densely packed it is with edges. The more edges we have, the more possible roots we have, the easier it is to find a Hamiltonian cycle. Let's make that a little rigorous. And so we'll make it with the following theorem. Let G be a simple graph on at least three vertices. Okay, we need at least three and we'll see why. Um, a simple graph, meaning no loops, no multiple edges. And suppose for every vertex, you have a, the degree is at least half the number of vertices. That means that for every vertex here, I go to at least half the other vertices as neighbors. That doesn't happen here. You can see in the Peterson graph, we have 10 vertices and the degree of each vertex is only three, which is a lot less than five. So that's why, well, it's not why, but that's one indication that the Peterson graph doesn't quite have enough edges to give us a Hamiltonian cycle. So let's look at why this theorem is true. And this is going to be an interesting case of a non-constructive proof. I'm not actually going to give you a Hamiltonian cycle or even a way to find one. I'm just going to show that one must exist. So we're going to do this as a proof by contradiction. Often proofs by contradiction are non-constructive. So suppose G has no Hamiltonian cycle. So we get to assume, remember, that G, every degree has at, uh, at least n over two neighbors, right? Every vertex has at least n over two neighbors, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add edges to G, and I'm going to make it incredibly dense. So add edges to G, but I want to do it in a very special way. Add edges to G such that we still have no Hamiltonian cycle, So I want to add as many edges as possible until I any edge that I add would give me a Hamiltonian cycle. So then I'm going to get this graph G prime, which is going to have the property that it has all the edges of G, has all edges of G. And if X, Y is not an edge, then adding x, y to um, the edges creates a Hamiltonian cycle. So I can do that just thinking in the Peterson graph. I could just start adding edges wherever I like as long as I don't create a Hamiltonian cycle. And as soon as there's no other edge I can add, that means that every possible edge would create a Hamiltonian cycle. That's when I stop. That's this graph G prime that we're going to get. Now, since we've added edges, we still know that the degree of V is at least N over 2 um, for all V and V. This is still true in G prime because we've added edges. So the degree has gone up, not down. So we still have that property, okay? But... Because adding any edge, but say between X and Y, would create a Hamiltonian cycle. This means that there's a Hamiltonian path. What is a Hamiltonian path? It's like a cycle, except it doesn't close back up. A Hamiltonian path from X 
2y. And that's what I've drawn up here. This is a Hamiltonian path. What does that mean? That means that v, my entire vertex set, is x, z1, z2, all the way up to zn minus 2 to y. This is the n vertices. They all line up in this nice path. Of course, I probably have other edges in my graph, but I at least have these edges. Okay? Now's where we're going to use the assumption that we had uh, on our graph that the degree is nice and big. Okay? So we know that the degree of x plus the degree of y, what is that? Well, it's at least n over 2 for x plus n over 2 for y, which is equal to n. So what does that tell me? That tells me that I'm going to look at the set of neighbors of x. And I'm going to look at the set of neighbors, well, not neighbors of y. I want to look at neighbors of neighbors of y, OK? And I have at least, so neighbors of x, I know this y is not in here. And neighbors of neighbors of x, well, I'm not really sure, but y is not in here. So when I intersect these sets, I know that it's not empty exactly because of this cardinality, because of how many vertices or how many neighbors I have. Remember, there's at least n over two things over here and at least n over two things over here. And we know that y is already not in here and y is not in here. So we, we have to have some non-trivial intersection. So let's let that guy be called zi. It has to be one of the z's, of course. So we're going to let that guy be zi. That's this one right here. So what does it mean? It means that zi is a neighbor of x. So that means I've got that line, that edge. And it's a neighbor of a neighbor of y. So that means that I've got, for example, that edge. And what does that tell me? Well, now, if you just look at this again, what do I know? Well, I've got, I can go from x, I can go all the way to this guy, to zi minus 1, jump across to y, come back down, across my path, and jump over, and I've got a Hamiltonian cycle. So this means that going from x to z1, z2, up to zi minus 1, to y, to zn minus 1, back down to zi, and over to x, is a Hamiltonian cycle. And that is a contradiction. I haven't added new edges. These edges already exist in my graph. So that's my contradiction. That's the proof that I couldn't have had the situation that I had before. So this is a classic kind of proof in graph theory. We have some property, and then we're going to augment our graph with extra etches so that we still have the property. The property here was no Hamiltonian cycle, lots of edges. So we kept having more and more edges. It didn't matter if we added them or not, but we kept this no Hamiltonian cycle property, and then we arrived at this contradiction. And now you can check. It's a nice exercise to check. Why does the Peterson graph not have a Hamiltonian cycle? It's not implied by this theorem. Some graphs with very few edges have Hamiltonian cycles. This one does not.